Hello and welcome back to Volumes. My name is Tom Gibson and in this very interesting episode I spoke with my friend Megan Spaulding on what it was like experiencing two strokes at the age of seven. So yeah, check out this episode and thanks very much for watching it. Would you like to introduce yourself? And tell me a bit about yourself. Um, I don't really know what to say. Like, I'm Megan, I guess. That's, that's good enough. That is a good introduction. So yeah, we are here today to talk about what I would consider, I think a lot of people would consider quite an interesting and fascinating subject because you have had a sort of really complex and confusing uh, health related issues throughout your life, yes? Yeah, Yeah. say more interesting. Yeah, so you were saying um, on on like before we started filming we were kind of talking about it a bit, so uh, you from the ages of zero till seven basically for all you knew you were like yeah i was like top health yeah like i was completely fine from like zero to the age of seven and um, like i had no health issues was just like your normal kid i guess yeah well um, <laughs> normal, normal quote, quote <laughs> <What's unquote>. that? <laughs> um and then obviously when i was seven i was diagnosed with crohn's um um and Correct me if I'm wrong, but they only discovered you had Crohn's because you took a stroke. Well, I got the Crohn's first. Like, I had oh, so Crohn's they... First. Ah, okay. Yeah, and then doctors have done a link between kids who have Crohn's and strokes. So how did they discover stroke. that you had Crohn's? Um, basically, I just started being, like, really ill. Right. And, like, really quickly. And I got, like, dead fatigued dead quickly. Right. It was, it was just horrible. Like, I was so ill um, all the way through it because, obviously, it is, like, an autoimmune disease. Yeah. Um, so your immune system just drops so like it'll go from being like a hundred to like nothing so quickly um um what and that's the there's a link between the or a correlation between people that have crohn's and people who take stroke yeah like doctors still don't know what the link is but there is definitely but there's definitely some sort of link there's a line that connects those two anomaly yeah. Um, and you took a stroke when you were seven. Seven. I took them both when I was seven. Um, both there was of them. Like, yeah. Well, how far between? I think. No, I could be wrong, but I think there was between like a week and a month between them. What? Like somewhere between a week and a month. Oh my god. That wasn't a great month then. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nor was the month to follow, but you know that month was a kick in the teeth. Um. So like. I don't, I honestly have no idea what strokes are, to be honest. Like, I honestly have, like, <laughs> on the scale of knowledge of strokes, mine's is at zero. I have no idea <laughs> really what strokes are. In fact, my naivety is telling me that, like, strokes are only for, like, old people. And honestly, obviously, a seven year old is around old it. Like, yeah. Anyone can have a stroke. It's like anyone can have cancer, anyone can have, yeah. like, a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, a stroke is like if you picture your body as a tree. Mm-hmm. This is the world's worst analogy, but it's what doctors tell you. I, I know. What, I know what trees are, so <laughs> this is this helps me a lot. <laughs> right, if you picture a tree and like branches that have obviously holes in the end, like big trunks that have like holes in the end, right. and imagine like loads of stones like falling down and then blocking the blood to the rest right. of the body. Okay. So basically, your brain's reaction is just to shut down completely. It's like yeah, that side of that body's not getting like any blood, any oxygen, any anything, so like just cut that completely. Um, so it's just a lack of blood to the brain? Yeah, basically. So your body just goes, yep, nope, we're not playing the game. What? Um, so when I had them, like, I was at my, it was Lanimer's in, oh God, when I was seven, don't know what year that makes. Oh, uh, we're not two, doing numbers. 2006? 2006, 2007, probably, yeah. You're, were you born in 1999 or 1998? Eight. So, that doesn't help me. I know. <laughs> yeah, but about there. Um, 2006, 2006, yeah, so it's like Larimer's, and I was at my granddad's planting flowers. So there's always an ongoing joke I'll never do gardening again. <laughs> it's P- what caused PTSD, it all. PTSD yeah. from gardening. Um, and I was just like kneeling down, and I was like, Mum, I can't feel like my left, like, I can't oh, feel. God. And like my face was like, obviously, you've seen the stroke advert where it's like yeah. fast, so it's like face, yep. arms, speech, and time. But it doesn't always happen in that order. So I lost complete, like all my left hand side, I lost complete sensation, like I couldn't feel anything. 
and then I couldn't walk and my mum was like I'll just get up <laughs> like and she feels so bad about this now because she's like I'll just get up you'll be fine I suppose she was probably a bit naive to it as well she yeah she was like oh, don't it's, just it's expect fine. your legs just went numb like get up yeah <laughs> like she feels so bad about that now but at the time she was like oh it's just it's nothing yeah and then obviously like, the rest of the symptoms followed and she then phoned the ambulance but when I got there, they were like, oh, we don't know what's happening. <laughs> they didn't know what was happening? No, Russia General did not have a clue. And it was wow. great. So I spent like two weeks in Russia General getting like tests. And they were like, yeah, we're going to then like send you to York mm-hmm. Hill, which is the Children's Hospital yeah, in Glasgow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I got sent there and I spent like nine months there. Wait, is two, your, two uh, like, yeah, nine months. what's going on in your, like, not what's going on in your your head, but like what's actually happening to your brain during this. Is I your brain st- remember, still not getting blood, or what's happening? I remember being conscious for because my mum wasn't going to phone an ambulance. She was like, "I'll just take you down to Russia General myself." So I remember being in the back of my mum's car, um, and still talking about my mum. And then all of a sudden, I couldn't talk. And I remember just not being able to talk and being able to shout <sighs> for mum. Like I was just sitting there like mum, and it, it just wasn't coming out. It was terrifying. Um, and then obviously when my mum like I remember her parking the car and I remember her coming out and obviously around the back to get me and that's all I remember right from me going to Wisha and then I remember trying to get tests done in Wisha but other than that it was straight coma for months straight coma it was well, me. Uh, like genuine yeah just like coma. out just for cold. how long I was in a coma for two months as far as I'm aware right it could have been longer um, but I'm sure it was just two months. This is this is like a deep dive because I, I like there was like a sort of basis of what we're going to talk about, and then it's like now we've got to- comas to talk about and Crohn's to talk about. I've got so much to talk about. So like a coma. Um, whoa. Okay. <laughs> um, what? That, I don't even know what to ask for. So probably like, the best sleep I've had since age <laughs> seven. Um. So you, yeah, you were in a coma for. Two, you think two months? Two months, as far as I'm aware. Um, I could be wrong. But which is obviously, it was caused by the stroke, Yeah, right? it's just your brain shutting down. It's your brain's reaction. It's just to be... So what's going on when you're when you're in a coma? Like, you're completely unconscious. Yeah. Like, you can... You can hear voices. Because I remember folk like moving around me and hearing voices. And when I was in York Hill, all I can remember is waking up and just like, seeing lights. Because the lights were like annoying my eyes. Um, from the hospital bed and one of the bays on your kill like the lights were annoying me so much <laughs> and mum like went to go shut around the curtain so that the lights weren't annoying me mm-hmm. and mum and the nurse then had an argument over how the curtain had to stay open I was like they're hurting my eyes <laughs> so we'll be shutting the curtain um, so lights affected me majorly for the first like couple of months that I was like not in a coma but like coming round from a coma I guess right. so I still couldn't talk like my speech was still really bad um, I had to go through like speech therapy and physical therapy right. um, for like months. So I was in your Hill for like ages. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> um, d- would the lights affect you because your eyes are very sensitive to? Like, yeah, because, obviously. Like, I'd been in a, like, you know what it's like when you like wake up in the morning. You, yeah. Like, if somebody opens up the curtain, you're like, oh no. But times that by two months. <laughs> yeah. And then imagine that. You're like, oh, that's really sore. <laughs> right. That's uh God, <laughs> um, that's intense. I've, like, I honestly don't. I can't even fathom what that would have been like to go through. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm shook. That's all I can say. I'm shook. Um, yeah. So when? What was it like being in hospital for about ten months? Uh, ten months. Um, yeah. Round about there. Yeah, round about that. It was effectively a year. Really yeah, effectively say. like. The way I see it is I lost part of my childhood, obviously, yeah, being in absolutely, hospital. Yeah. Like, mentally, I lost a lot of my childhood. So yeah. I'll be like, I'll see, like, my sister and stuff going out, and I'll be like, oh, I can't, can't do that anymore. I'm like an adult. <laughs> oh, man, this hard. It's, it's <laughs> like, painful. Uh, uh, um, we're only, like, nine minutes in, and I'm already lost for words. <laughs> can't handle this. Um, yeah, so after... Uh, Coming back out of the hospital, what was life like then? Um, just obviously, like, sort they put of me on like your... kind of the day release sort of thing. So I was like going home like days here and days there. Right, okay. I did a few trips to my local primary school in Kirkluck, mm-hmm. 
where I was told I wouldn't be able to attend again because I was still in a wheelchair. And it's like, but I, I could still like sort of walk, like my walking wasn't where it should be at. Right. But I could like walk, sort of. Right. <laughs> you, could, you could walk enough to say you could walk, but it was probably better for your health not to walk. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and they said you're not going back to primary school. Yeah, zone. I couldn't because High Mill, the building in Curlick, up beside the roundabout. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's recently been done up, and that is all stairs. Like the entire oh, building right. is stairs. Oh, okay. So you, it wasn't like you can't go to school because like. Yeah, the head teacher basically went, "You're not coming. Like, there we can't accommodate for you. Like, we can't That's just start putting in ramps and stuff. Oh like, God. you'll need to change school." And instantly, I'm thinking straight away. That's my friend group, like gone. I'm yeah, gonna spend like totally the rest is. of my life. No. Um, but I mean, m- maybe I'm like silly and saying this, but that feels like so terrible for the school to be like. Well, we would was, rather like, we had to fight yeah. for me to be able to go back to that school. We would rather you not come than us to make the the exception of like putting in a like wheelchair accessible areas, yeah. which feel like like that should be like a standard anyway, right? Um, but no, it wasn't. So they were like, oh, you'll just need to like move school. So I was like looking at other schools and I was like, no, I don't want to like obviously leave my friends. Yeah, because it's not about the school really. It's about the memories and the sort of friendships you created at that school. Not yeah, just Like no one definitely. cares about the school. I know. You don't care about those teachers and stuff. Uh, I know, but definitely like the school. Um, and did they like, did, were they like, yeah, okay, we'll put in the... They never, I don't think they actually put in any ramps or stuff. I think it just got to the point where obviously I had like in high school I had like help to like walk around school. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had that in primary. Right. So, um, sort of like, uh, so it was so much so like Megan could walk up like ten steps and then get tired. So it was yeah. Megan walk up ten steps. I'll carry the wheelchair up. We'll put you in the wheelchair and move you around to like the next set to get up right. like this whole flight of stairs. Right. And it was a pain. And like I thank everybody who helped me like all the way through that. But yeah. Like I'm still really thankful. I could obviously go back to that primary. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so like things like uh, leaving class early and stuff like that. So you're not. Like, yeah, like I had crowds. to do that in like primary as well. Like I got like an extra five minutes to get down the stairs to go to break and stuff. Um, for the first couple of months, I wasn't allowed to go outside on break. So somebody used to sit in with me, and. What was the reason? Kind of just safety. Like my balance right. wasn't what it should be. Obviously, after having the two strokes. Mm-hmm. Um purely just because that affects balance majorly when you can't stand on one side of your body yeah, you're like, that would affect <laughs> a duck balance. on one leg you're like oh great so how long did it take uh, for you to sort of develop your walking again back to um, a, a, a standard of like now I can actually walk going back to obviously York Kill um, once I came out of the coma they were pretty much like right physiotherapy occupational therapy right I don't know therapy. what these are <laughs> I know what speech <laughs> therapy is it's got speech in the name but that's yeah. it um Physical therapy is more like just physio, so it's just like going to the gym, right, okay. training, learning right. to walk again. Like building up muscle yeah. and, and... Occupational okay. therapy, I might be wrong, but I'm sure that's more like your hands and stuff. Right, okay. Like, like the intricacies of... Yeah, right. I'm only going for that because like occupation, you need I don't hands. know, so whatever you say, I'm going to trust you here. <laughs> I'm just going to say that could be wrong. Uh, so yeah, I went through like months of physiotherapy. Like just training, like treadmill, learning to stand on Is this a at, they do this at the hospital? Yeah, they do right. it in York Hill. Like there's a whole like physiotherapy gym base, um, hydrotherapy as well. Like learning to swim. Oh, okay, alright. Um, being in the pool doing exercises in the pool because it's a lot easier to like obviously do exercises in the water. Yeah. Um, because you're like weightless in water. <sighs> um, so learning to walk again through that. Um, just the gym. Just so what was that them. like to to sort of do that? Like, I was just tra- it's training constantly. Yeah, it's like you're it's in the almost Olympics. like yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. It's, it's almost like, like you're an athlete, like going through these sort of rigorous programs. But the one thing they kept on telling me was, if you want to walk again, you need to do this. Right. Okay. So it's like so I had was no this like? Do you have to do this every single day? Or yeah. Every day. Yes. It was like waking up, right, gym, waking up, right, gym. Did you feel like you were achieving something? Did you feel like Yeah, like I'm definitely like somewhere? even through my speech, like they put me through so many exercises for my speech and it's still not what it should be at, but it's a lot better. Right. Um just lots of exercises really. <laughs> Fair enough, yeah. Um so is this like right now, is this as a peak as your health will get? Or do they think that Um it's still like kind of fragile and you, there could be potential of it getting worse or what did they think? 
my Crohn's alone could, like, that can vary on a scale of, like, 1 to 100. Currently, it's sitting about 50-50 and everything's all good, touch wood. Um, with, obviously, my left-hand side, I have exercises I'm meant to do. But you do not do I them. don't do them, no. Because <laughs> at the minute I'm thinking, well, I can walk. Yeah, one day I'd love to be able to, like, obviously walk in high heels and be able to go out and do stuff everyone else can do. Um, but everything that I've always came across that I struggle with, mm-hmm. like, I don't know, cutting a sandwich. Like, there's yeah. always a way around that. Like, I'll put my left hand on it and then cut the sandwich. Or I'll find right. a way, I'll find something to, like, hold it. So, like, there's always a way around it. Yeah. Um, but if I did my exercises, I probably would be, I hate saying normal, but like, yeah, normal. I'd be like your as average, you your average version, I guess. <laughs> your average teenage girl. Yes. Um, geez, oh yeah. So, w- is your uh, left hand side just severely damaged? Uh, um, and, like, is it is it the core, like the sort of um, connection between your mind telling your hand what to do? Or is it that your hand physically yeah, just doesn't like, work to a certain standard? Or? I'm sure I learned about this in biology. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's like, like, if you imagine a line and then there's a bit in the middle. Did you do biology? No. <laughs> no, great, this isn't going to happen. Um, anyway, it's like from one po- from point A to point B and then the wee link between B and C, that doesn't work. So like, right, okay. it really is and it doesn't really. like. So my brain telling my hand to like open, like it, it doesn't, like it just, it doesn't, like it wiggles. <laughs> It, right. does, it will never open. Um, do they think it could? It probably could again if I did what I should do with my physio. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm like, well, I've came this far. <laughs> like, I need yeah. to go much further. Give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. I'll, I'll work on this later. <laughs> yeah, I um, wow. Jeez, oh, yeah. So, yeah, you were saying, like, when you said uh, you feel like you've missed out a chunk of your, your youth. Do you feel like it's, like, really taking its toll on, like, your sort of development throughout life? <clears throat> mentally yes but at the same time folk could look at that and be like oh but you made friends in hospital and I'm like yeah, oh, yeah. I, I made I friends that, but obviously they were obviously I don't want to say mentally like behind as well but I suppose they were like I made this one friend um I can't remember what was wrong with her but like we became really good friends and she was like mentally a few years behind as well right um so we just got on great because we were like this we weren't the same yeah. age like physically but mentally yeah. we were the same age that like we were back that few years yeah. um that's interesting that you said that you don't remember what was wrong with her because like you've, you've not like <laughs> connected her with like an illness you just see her as like yeah, her own person, her person without it being like a um I honestly can't, i do know i just can't remember <laughs> it's kind of annoying um so see the people you made friends with during like your period in hospital do you still like keep in contact with them? That one girl I kept in contact with up until two years ago, I think. So we no longer speak. We just completely lost contact. Like right. I was dealing with college, she was dealing with like working and uni and stuff. So we just completely lost contact. Right. Do you think those people helped a lot? Like yeah, like definitely yeah. like being a child in hospital and having still having friends. Yeah. Um, a lot of my friends from primary did come visit me, in hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, like Heather Nelson from school, she used to visit me every Friday. Well, that's brilliant. Used to bring me oh, school work. Yeah, it was oh, lovely. Oh God, no <laughs> She bored into a school. But there was a school that's in really the nice there was a school in the hospital, so oh, I got really? to like, right. still okay. catch up. Um, she used to come visit, and she'd bring like all my school work. Um, Capri Suns, like it's cravings in hospital. You don't get Capri Suns anywhere. Jeez. And like a tub of Haribo's every Friday, and that would be like my one thing. Like I always look forward to a Friday because that was like oh, yeah. my like that was yeah. my day. Um, but yeah, going back to like obviously who else visited? Did, There's still like a few other folk. Did the uh, school in the hospital work? How similar was it to like a normal school? A, it was a normal school. A room about from the end of that counter to like there, and I had like four tables. Right. And it was really weird. It was like very compact learning. It right. was basically it wasn't like your normal school work. It would take you right back to basics. Right. So like adding and subtracting because yeah. mentally I was those few years behind. Yeah. They wanted to make sure I could do that, so it was like learning to tell the time again, right. which in primary three I wasn't very good at. And still, uh, still, still, still I was not, very, say, good I'm at not that. very good at that now. <laughs> like, um, I'm, I'm definitely lacking that field. Um, and we did like arts and crafts, and it was like your normal school, but like made it fun and like right. obviously enjoyable for you. Um, but yeah, it, was, it wasn't like a normal school. 
So you were in this would have been like when you were in primary, right? Yeah. So it would be one teacher sort of doing all the yeah all the subjects. So for those that uh, are in hospital for prolonged periods of time, that should be in high school. Do they still have like yeah they have like a secondary yeah they do like a secondary school. I think the secondary school was held on a Thursday. Like right. only a Thursday. I was like only a Thursday. Well, that, that's not how secondary school actually works. <laughs> Maybe because like the one to one. Yeah, like, it was very much like know. my friend who I can't remember the name of anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> Times are changing. I know. Um, she would only ever go on a Thursday because, although she was obviously the same age as me mentally, like she was actually like sixteen, seventeen odd. Right. Um. So uh-huh. she would obviously go to the secondary school, and yeah. I was still in primary learning right. numbers. <laughs> So what was it that was like? Uh, I mean, I don't, don't want to like gossip with other people. But what was what was her disability or what was her uh, um, illness? Or? Oh, I can't remember. She was on holiday one year. Um, obviously, like, I've her backstory. Um, she was on holiday one year, and it was something to do with the sun that affected her. Really? It like mentally though. It like I don't know what it was. She got like really bad sunburn or something. And then I don't really know. She was uh, like mentally affected. It was so insane. I'm never going on holiday again. I know it's really <laughs> scary. Um, and mentally, that just put her back a few years. But I can't remember the link or what it's called. It's so interesting though. Like the fact the sun can do oh, that yeah. to somebody. I'm like, not going on holiday. In fact, I, w- I was just talking with someone yesterday saying how fragile our bodies are. Yeah. We really just take it for granted um, how how easily everything can just change. Um, and or maybe you'll see that in a different light. Maybe you'll think all the time, like, yeah, I, I, I for one can definitely see that our bodies and are fragile and everything can just yeah, no, definitely. Like, this all started planting flowers for me. So yeah, like, coming oh. back to that, good, good uh, segue there. I was gonna say, do you have any um, things that you specifically won't do or, or think about or uh, like interact with because it reminds you of like that moment in time like um, you said you didn't do you don't like gardening i hate gardening my mum will always be like oh come out help me with the plants I'm like, which no. totally makes sense you would um I would. like you you wouldn't want to do that do you know what i mean like it, it probably would create quite a yeah it does like I I, i'm scared to physically touch yeah. soil or plants like i won't go near it it's kind of like that girl like I, I wouldn't be surprised if she didn't want to go on holiday again yeah because that's like that would scare me yeah um so is there anything I'll, like other than gardening <laughs> that, <laughs> what an odd like thing <laughs> um <clears throat> mainly just gardening i guess like everything else is very much touch and go right. like i don't know i think it's just gardening so leaving uh hospital going uh, like like being reintroduced into primary and stuff like that was there any anything after being back in primary everyone being uh, as normal as it sort of can be till now is there any like major uh, health or, or or crazy things like taking a stroke <laughs> that occurred um thankfully not had a third stroke but yeah. it could happen so touch wood it does i mean two strokes this is a is, um, by the age of seven <laughs> is like that must be some sort of record you're I know. Making, isn't <laughs> it? like, like, Really, definitely took the biscuit there. Like, yeah. <laughs> won't have one. Let's just have two. I mean, statistically, I can't imagine that it occurs a lot for people under the age of ten. It does it. Um, no, but the link between kids having strokes and kids having Crohn's is right. really like high. I can't remember the exact percentage, but that is fairly high. Right. Kids who have strokes, not so high. Kids who have strokes and Crohn's, very high. Right. Don't understand What's why. What's the sort of like average for kids having Crohn's in general? Um generally quite low no it's actually quite high really yeah. like especially like i'm in so many forums like on facebook and twitter <laughs> just for kids and adults who have crohn's yeah and like the amount of folk that have it and nobody knows it exists i'm like always yeah. sharing stuff on facebook i'm like guys this is this is happening like yeah. the folk have this and everybody's like oh what's well what's that and i'm like yeah. well guys <laughs> Um, I mean, talking about like bringing attention to it and stuff. Do you think it's necessary to bring attention to it? Definitely, because yeah. it, like the rise in numbers of everybody who has it. Like ever since I've had it, I'm like, um, I used to work in a call center like last year, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh yeah, I've got Crohn's, so like I can't eat that. And this the guy beside me was like, oh I've got Crohn's, and then like oh it was oh. like just worked like all the way down the call center. Like, oh, I've Everyone's got shouting, I've got Crohn's, I've got Crohn's. It was really interesting to find that like, loads of people have it, but yeah. like the severity of everyone who had it obviously like ranged differently. Right, right. Um, so I had mine quite like mine's just quite chill, right? 
but everyone else had theirs like really bad i was like oh sorry <laughs> maybe i don't yeah, have you, you can be like yeah but i took a stroke <laughs> <I know. laughs> and then you just one up them and then yeah. they're doing it um so you're saying you're in forums and stuff like that that's so that's so interesting as like uh is there lots of like sort of groups like that, that like there's loads around? on like for a lot of illnesses all over facebook like there's loads of groups like there's one yeah. for there's a cancer group that i'd um told a few of like my friends about for like their families and stuff um there's a uh, loads of crohn's but I'm, I'm like three or four on facebook for crohn's and colitis so is it like a just for general information about it or like um, a no, support just, like, group lo- or like a bit of both really right. like everybody will like post their stories daily and like how they're feeling um, and we just kind of like all help each other like it's yeah. really good like I'm friends with this guy down in England and his Crohn's is always really bad like he's yeah. in hospital every other week with it and I'm like oh <laughs> sorry to hear that but well, my <laughs> mind's really sorry, okay <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's so fascinating it's so interesting that like something like that can create such like a strong community yeah um, I suppose that's something we don't really appreciate how almost like unfortunate like, events our can lives bring are people rubbish, together but it does bring us together yeah, yeah. that's brilliant isn't it um, I'm guessing that's like a, like an amazing thing to have Such yeah like support definitely people, especially when they understand it yeah and they went through it like there's kids on these groups as young as like 13 or 14 I don't know the legal age to be on Facebook but there's kids like 13 <laughs> or 14 on these pages and I'm like oh that's really cute like I had like got Crohn's when I was 7 and they're like whoa and you get the occasional person that comes on well you can't have Crohn's at the age of 7 and I'm like well, there's always that one guy though you that? can <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> believe what you will. I can. I did. <laughs> I have evidence. You're, like, sending them photos, like, this is proof. <laughs> I'm in hospital here. Um, oh, my God. That's just so, so interesting. So, yeah, um, from, like, going back to uh, primary school and stuff like that, do you say there was, like, nothing? It almost stayed quite steady after yeah, that. Yeah, from, like... From primary one to two, I was like, A-OK, perfect health, yeah. normal child. Again, normal. Normal. Um, primary three is kind of where it all kicked off. Obviously, going back to school, middle towards the end of like primary four. Yeah. Um, and then through five, six, and seven, obviously in high school, like I knew what I could and couldn't eat. Yeah. I knew what I could, like physically could and couldn't do. Yeah. So it was like sort of like a learning period. Yeah. You, you got like, it. It's, like, it's very much it touch awful. and go. Yeah. Like, if you're allergic to something you'll know oh i can't have that full stop but yeah. i won't know if i can have it or do it until yeah. i try so it's very much i need to try everything once like yeah. i need to um and i suppose with allergies you like once you know what you're allergic to you know to specifically stay away from that ingredient but with I, Crohn's I, I it don't. might be like quantities of that thing yeah. and stuff like that like definitely that's... the main thing i can't eat would be fried food right but and do you know why it's, it's different between every person. It just it, it just varies. It's like some so folk complex. can't eat like red peppers. Some folk can't eat onions. Some folk right. can't eat like red meat. It's yeah. like well, I've heard a lot of people that have Crohn's and they can't drink coffee. Yeah, coffee like, can be quite a bad one for yeah. like most people. Um, no idea why. Doctors don't know why. Specialists don't know why. So is like, there like a very little information on this? Yeah. We kind of like understand that like, it's a thing, but we don't understand why yeah. it's a thing. It's like, great, you've been working on this for years. It's very much like, I don't want to obviously compare it to cancer, but folk don't really know like cancer and how to stop it. Yeah. Folk don't know Crohn's and why it happens yeah. or how it happens or just why. Yeah. <laughs> like, and. Uh, I'm ge- also you can't really stop it can you like you can't no, really it's, stop it's all, I'm always gonna have Crohn's like it's right. always get, I'm always gonna need to live with it so you can't stop it but can you like suppress it in any way um is there like I um, used to be on tablets for mine which were immunosuppressants so right. they would like they'd either higher or lower my immune system right um I can't remember what one I also have no idea which one. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> Only to Google it after. Um, um, but wait, would it not, that would obviously help. I, mean, I don't want to like claim nothing here, but um, would it not lower your immune system? Or no, wait, not your immune system. Would it higher? I think would it not make your immune system higher, so you're less likely to. But I thought like. Oh uh, no! Wait, if it lowers, Crohn's isn't Crohn's an, like an autoimmune disease? Yeah. So then, if you lowered that, then it might not react to the. You know what, we'll go with that because that sounds about correct. I mean, I don't know nothing. (laughs) I'm sure someone will, like, message me and be like, you're an absolute idiot, why (laughs) do you say that? (laughs) No, Um, that sounds about right, though, because I'm, like, 
more likely to like catch the cold and stuff so my right, okay. system is lowered right okay. so that makes sense so we'll go with that um yeah so generally is it just like just health is rubbish yeah in general. always like i was choked with a cold two weeks ago and i was so ill and yeah. i gave it to everyone in my house and now yeah. they're all ill and i'm like i'll just hide in my room do you catch like things like the cold more often yeah and like then when the you cold do it's like can put me that it's me i'm killer. floored yeah like folk will be like oh it's just the cold i'll be like no because no. i feel like <laughs> not it's quite. not just the cold it can be like the football and flu like yeah. ass knees that'll be me i'm done um to the point where a few years ago my wee sister got chicken pox and chicken pox and you just kill moved me. house <laughs> yeah I had, to, I had to go stay with my dad oh really so you yeah. really did just move house and then I had to go and ho- I got hospitalised for it because chicken pox can kill me right soaking the cold soaking so measles wouldn't pumps. putting you in a hospital for 10 months be a bad idea then because that's like the prime location for <laughs> disease and illness do you know what I mean yeah but I suppose when you think about it everyone with like contagious diseases like chicken pox yeah they're all in like cubicles all right, I have no, so, I don't know, no, no, I don't know nothing about anything <laughs> to be honest. I think you lock those people up. Right? <laughs> they get put in a box. Yeah, they do. Had no way. Um, so when I had mine and I was hospitalised, I was put in a box for like four days. <laughs> just like just live in there. So wait, you actually did catch a uh, chicken pox? Yeah, I got a chicken oh, pox. Oh right, okay. So it can kill me. So they're whoa. like, yep, antibiotics, just keep going. My goodness, and what like was that just terrible? It was horrible because like I woke up one morning and like I knew even Rory already had chicken pox, like my brother and sister, and I just woke up one morning and got changed, didn't think anything of it, and my dad came through and he was like, "Oh, you're covered in like chicken pox," and I just started oh, crying no. because my entire life I was told, "Yeah, you get chicken pox, you're going to die." So me at like <laughs> the age of fourteen <laughs> in tears, thinking I'm gonna die. This is it. This is fourteen it. years. That's me. I'm done. You start writing your will. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> and then my dad had phoned my mum. Was like, yeah, Megan needs to go to hospital. <laughs> so it was straight away in New York Hill, bypassed Russia General, <laughs> like straight in New York Hill, fixed my child. So in all your time in hospital, do you think it was um like do, do you think you generally had like. Not necessarily a good experience, but were they good to you and like? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, do you ever feel like why were they like this or did those doctors were rubbish or anything like that or? No, like, generally was a, a better experience. Than I can that. still go back. Like, I still obviously not at the new hospital, but when York Hill used to be where it used to yeah, be, yeah. I guess. Um, like even just walking in for like checkups and stuff, I'd still see doctors and I'd be like, oh hi, and like how are you? And I'd talk to like a lot of right. them. And a lot of the doctors in the ward I was in, like, I still recognise them. And I would be like, oh, hi, how are, like, how are you? Mm-hmm. Um, like, a lot of them still work there. And, like, they must be really old, but they still work yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really know where to go from here. I'm, I'm blown away. I feel like I've got too many questions. I can't concentrate on what to ask next. Um, going back to, like, uh, you think that people should, like, know more about it. Because little, like, so little people do understand it and know what's going on. Um, how do you think they're, they're like? Do you, is there a specific way to try and like better people's understanding, or is it just generally um, like, like would you prefer people just come up to you and be like, hey, yeah, do you mind if we we'll like, have a conversation? You know, about I work this? with kids. Um, like I'm a scout leader, so like working yep. with kids, kids will be like, oh, what's wrong with your arm? And like, why can't why can't you eat this? Like, if yeah. we're baking something, they'll be like, oh, why can't you have this? Or like, why can't you like walk? Why do you walk like that? Right. And explaining it to kids is always like a lot easier than explaining it to adults because yeah. like the kids will be like oh why have you broke your arm i'll be like oh yeah just broke it or like i'm a transformer like you can make yeah, it yeah you could say whatever you want and a kid will like, probably be yeah, like awesome um, <laughs> that's <you> know, awesome <laughs> a fairy hit me and i fell over yeah. like you can make it so much more but like what adults like adults will be less likely to ask i've found right. they'll just kind of look at you and it's that look of oh i wonder what's wrong but they yeah. won't ask and it annoys me so much like i'd really rather folk would ask because nobody asked all the way through school right they all just kind of looked and thought oh there's like megan who's disabled and can't right. eat certain food yeah it's just like the bracket of like disabled but yeah. it's not like why or nobody how knows or... why nobody would ever yeah. ask like there was one or two folk in school who asked yeah and that was it so you'd probably prefer if people did ask and yeah a conversation like, about it, there's yeah. nothing named they can ask that will ever offend me they'll be like oh why do you walk funny like i've had to ask every <laughs> way possible why do you walk funny? why do you walk like that why do you look like that like <laughs> whoa i guys. don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's getting a bit insulting um oh. so yeah um would you like what am i trying to say here how how would you 
sort of uh i bet that's gonna sound awesome for those mics by the way honestly i yeah. know it's gonna sound so good that's like asmr <laughs> peak um what's my question here like other than just like actually talking directly to you to learn about it is there any specific ways that people can learn about this um i would advise nobody google it and yeah. webmd is not the way forward because yeah. you google you, you'll uh, google that and then you'll be like yep i've now got I, this i have <laughs> it yeah i have crohn's like you'll be ill or it'll be like the floor or something you'll be like yep i have crohn's yeah <laughs> or like yeah your foot's gone numb yep two strokes that's, that's it that's, that's what i've <laughs> never had never gardening again <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, was is there any like actual good resources on this? Definitely, like I'd just advise like if you obviously have Crohn's, just join in forums, right. and if like anything like IBD related, which is immune build is usually related, mm-hmm. um, just join in forums of course and speaking to folk who have it. Um, I never Google any of my symptoms online. <laughs> yeah, which is um, definitely the wisest. Um, how would you know for those people out there listening right now that are like, oh, I just ate a chippy and I feel a bit weird. <laughs> um, how would they know? Like, is there anything you would like be like that these are sort of uh, uh, specific symptoms that could occur or anything like that? Um, basically just being ill. Just being really <laughs> just ill. Just being really ill. Like... I don't really know. Can like, you go get tested age. for it? Uh, like, could you accidentally find out you have it? Like, going to get tested for something else? Or yeah, like most definitely. Be... Like, because doctors can't really pinpoint what causes it. Like, if you have always have like bowel issues, they will test you for everything from like everything under the IBD umbrella, which is obviously your Crohn's, your colitis, your IBS, right? Like everything, so they will test you for all that, and they'll maybe tell you, oh, you've got like IBS, when really it's Crohn's. Right. Because they can't specifically pinpoint right. what it is. So. Gee, this is so messy, <laughs> isn't it? Like, they're like... Like, doctors and specialists, yeah. they just don't know. I, f- I feel like you know, like, you're in trouble with doctors about, like, oh, yeah, um, um. it's this thing, we think, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Um, in hospital, like, what did you go through any sort of weird uh, tests and stuff like that? Did you, What's that thing called? It's like the tunnel thing. An MRI scan. Did you ever experience yeah. that? I don't know why. I felt like an urge to ask that. Like there was a cosmic uh, belief that you probably went through that. I don't know why. Yeah, I think I had two of them. Um, what really, was that like? They're really scary. I honestly, like, I think I'd They're I'd really panic. scary. Yeah. Like, I still refer to them as a giant pole moment because it's what it is. That is the best description um, ever. Basically, they lie you down. They give you a helmet with like earphones because it's just like a giant. <laughs> what? A helmet? They give you, yeah, like, it's just like a big helmet they put over your head. With, like, Are they earphones. dangerous, these things? What is, what no, they're just like... I think they just like it's like a giant x-ray machine so when it spins it like takes a picture and it'll take like it continuously right. takes pictures um but they make you drink awful like liquid before it so they can see like everything oh, so clearly right. and you can't like eat like you can't eat like the day before the day before it is right, horrible okay. um so it just takes like lots of pictures of the inside of your stomach to check everything's all gucci not gucci and they were like not gucci not gucci definitely, <laughs> definitely not gucci. Megan, no um, um uh, and you say you got earphones as well you get to listen to music yeah so you get to listen to music when it's because obviously it's like a big cylinder of metal that's you know, like you know the question I'm going to ask oh no what did you listen to Um, I think it was a Black Eyed Peas song actually both times yeah didn't choose a different song for no you must have loved the Black Eyed Peas I love the Black Eyed Peas do you know what if that's what you're into it, fair enough <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else like that's kind of like a weird experience like that that you've um, had I'm trying to think of like more medical procedures that I've went through. It was just like a lot of x-rays and like a lot of MRI scans. A lot of like, bl- I'm meant to get my bloods done every, like blood tests done every three months. Right. But they recently took me off my medication because I'm all good. Oh, good. I know. Well Ooh. done. <laughs> I'm proud. <laughs> um, so they don't do my bloods any, like three months anymore. So um, what, how, why did they take you off your medication? What did they decide? Because like- they were like, um, I go to the IBD clinic every six months right. and the guy was like, well, my doctor, the guy. The guy. <laughs> that guy I see every six months. <laughs> my drug <was> like, guy. <laughs> he was like, no symptoms. I was like, nope. He was like, your weight, your height, you're all good. All right. Tick, tick, tick. We're taking you off these tablets. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I've been on these tablets since I was seven. <laughs> like, yeah. Keep them. Keep me on them, please. You're, you've got like, uh, what do you call it? Withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight away. And I'm still on them. Um, um, but no, they took me off them and touch wood, everything's still all 
good. How long has it been since you were off them? Oh god, like three years now. Three years? And absolutely no... Nope. That's awesome, Like I just said, but it's still food related, so I know what yeah. I can and can't eat. Yeah. Like fried food is a no-go. But as I said, you see a chippy, you're like, could go a fish supper. <laughs> <laughs> so like, when you came off them three years ago, did you kind of think... This is awesome. Like we're we're getting somewhere almost. Yeah, like, like straight away. I was like, yeah, this is a milestone. But like, I was still scared to try like fried food. Yeah. So I literally had my first KFC like last year. And I was like, how oh, was that experience? Loved it. <laughs> God, I'm hungry now. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's so fascinating. Like, it's all I don't know. It's like you just never expect people to like when you when you learn about something like this, you don't learn about those intricacies like. Oh yeah, like KFC was a no-go. KFC was definitely a no-go. McDonald's, yeah. no-go. It was just funny because I eat them regularly now. So <laughs> um, interesting. Chip shops, no-go. Um, garlic was a no-go for a while. Yeah. But I can now eat that. So if anything, uh, if you, like, you ever wanted a diet, this would you, you would want IBS or like <laughs> the, Crohn's. the Crohn's diet. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic for losing weight. So, I don't so recommend convenient. it. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh no. Um. Yeah. Oh. I know. Rock and roll. <laughs> this is so interesting. Is there anything you want to specifically talk about? Um. Oh God, I don't know. Putting you on the spot. No. Is there any any good stories you've got? Good good stories about having Crohn's. Yeah, they're um. the best stories. <laughs> is there any? Um, or, I don't really think so. No? <laughs> that sounds so boring, but I don't really think so. There's nothing exciting about having Crohn's. <laughs> there's nothing. Ex- well, to be honest, yeah, I can, I can believe that it's just superly like, inconvenient and <laughs> rubbish to have. Um, that sounded so naive to say <laughs> that, like, I would sound like an idiot, but really must be just terrible to have. Um... Do you like find you have like specific ways of coping with it? Obviously, just don't if you just avoid eating things. Yeah, like definitely, like mentally. If like I see my friends, like obviously years ago, if I seen my friends out like having yeah. a chip shop, like even through my family, like I'd need to have like oven chips if right. they were having like fish and chips. I'd be like, okay, cool. So um, do you feel so like that, that took a major yeah. impact on me? Obviously, like not being able to like be the same as them. Yeah, it's like there's such minor things like in a sense they're very minute and mundane but at the same time like that's just like you should be able to do that. that's just life that you like, just definitely, do these like, things everything everyone else on the planet takes for granted yeah, i'm like absolutely yeah. i can't take that for granted yeah is there anything else out with like food that, and, and eating that it affects you said it like, sort of lowers your immune system yeah as well, it lowers so i'm like more likely like, to catch like right. a common cold very interesting isn't it um yeah I mean, I'm, I'm, I have no more questions, I don't think. I'm content with the answers. Uh, unless there's anything you want to talk about? Not really, no. Um, <laughs> um, do you want to like, close it up with some, with some closing words on where you can, what, you can, what you're doing, what you want to talk about, anything you want to plug? No. I don't, I don't know, not really, no. Um, Put me on the spot. I'm like, yeah, that's what happens here. It's just uh, intense question after question. Um, yeah well thank you very much I really appreciate you coming on and talking about this not really a bother and, and uh, yeah thank you thanks for watching the episode if you're uh, watching this on YouTube please remember to like and subscribe that means a huge amount and uh, if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts uh, please remember to leave a review that'd be amazing and this will be coming soon to Spotify as well you can check it out And please remember to check out the social medias for updates and other stuff. And yeah, thank you very much.